Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And yesterday, I played a vehicle that I was ashamed of taking out onto the battlefield, the KV-222, on my main account. So today, to make up for it, and as penance, I am playing on my free-to-play account, an account which I've never spent anything on, and I'm going to be taking out two of my favourite Tier 8 vehicles that I'm currently progressing through. So firstly, I want to play the IS-3, this Tier 8 Soviet heavy tank. You don't really need a reason to love this vehicle. Everything about this tank is just well-rounded and great. Sure, it doesn't have the most gun depression, doesn't have the most view range. We're not taking it into a town situation. Try and use your armor and try and be the harassment tank with good penetration on its standard rounds for a tier 8 heavy. Used to be excellent back in the day. These days, 225 at tier 8 just feels the right about, about the right amount. Although I think it's 226 as far as I know. It is 225 to be exact. This allows you to be able to penetrate most vehicles without necessarily dabbing the two key and loading the gold. However, even though I am playing live today, so to say, and I'm going to be playing as this video is recording, uh, the matchmaker hasn't been very friendly to me. Okay, so we're dealing with tier 10 tanks, including two Soviet tier 10 tanks in the form of the 268 version 4 and the 277, and there are three self-propelled guns as well. All right, so firstly, always a good idea to have a little bit of a cheeky look as to where your team are going. Not because that changes where you're going to go, but it might give you an idea of how much support you're going to have when you get there. And clearly, when you're a baby tank like this, it's not about rushing into uh, an isolated position and getting caught out unless you feel like it's going to have a tremendous impact in the game to be able to try and contest those early positions. All right, so with the IS-3, I want to be just aiming fourth to see if we can get an early shot down this corridor. It's very unlikely to happen. I'm definitely not going to be spotting for myself. I'm using vertical stabilizers, a gun rammer, and vents in this vehicle, although when... Uh, binoculars used to be able to be demounted. I would always use binoculars in this tank. All right, so self-propelled guns are... Oh, well, that 268 version 4 really wants to go for this. So I'm going to be the good tier 8 tank, and I'm going to try and track him. But unfortunately, my shell goes slightly towards the left. Luckily for me, I actually ricocheted the object 268 version 4, who managed to hit me on the move. Yeah, very casual, right, for a 268 version 4 to just be YOLOing in shells. Now, this tank doesn't have the largest amount of ammunition. If it did, I would probably end up firing high explosive rounds here. I might be able to get a cheeky shot out while I'm waiting for the 277 to reload. The 268 version 4 nearly able to get me there. Okay, so he's got a bit of a weak point on top that I should be able to penetrate. I wish I had some HE rounds that I could sling at these vehicles. I want to try and dodge the 277 and then see if I can get a shot in the 268 version 4. But you notice there's a T124 who's actually harassing. So as long as I can hold this corner with my E75 TS, we should be okay. We're very valuable tier 8 tanks now. And the 268 version 4 realizes that we are trying to harass his vehicle. Um, well, we're trying to hold him still while the 268 version 4 gets behind him. So unfortunately for me, I took a round from a different tank destroyer. And I am now half hit points because the object 704 hit me from the back. Do you notice how we're just holding here? Well, I'm going to warn my team that there's a 704 at the back. And unfortunately, he's going to be taking big chunks off everyone. And I can't really afford to get hit again. Look at that right on the cheeks of the vehicle because I was angled very much. That means that my armor is going to be weak. Although, let's be honest, with a tier 8 heavy, you're not going to be bouncing those big old tier 9 TD shells all that often. All right. So look, I didn't do much damage. I didn't do much spotting. But by locking down the 268 version 4 and countering their aggression by holding the line, allowing the T124 and my team to be able to flank and be able to get shots in, we've actually managed to have quite a significant impact in that game. All right, so I want to play the support role. Whenever I'm playing my tier 8 vehicle, sometimes it's not about being the hero inside these tier 10 matchups. And the 704 actually kills that player, which means he's quite far over towards the left. I have got some time now before I manage to... Oh, it just went towards the left. I needed to hit slightly more on the inside. So I know there's a 704 up there. I'm going to tell my team again. I know that that 704 is actually not close to the, the building now, so to say. He's actually quite far out in the bushes as he was able to hit the E50 in the side from further away. Oh, God, he's 75 TS. You're about to get hit by a 704, my friend. Yeah, well, I can't let him down, you know. I've got to go and fight this while this guy's reloading. So I'm going to put one into him. I'm going to get into cover... 
I'm going to get behind him, repair the med kit, where hopefully he won't be able to depress the gun over the butt of the tank and the E75 manages to shut him down. So once again, I'm going to tell my team that there's a 704 at the back because, hell, that tier 9 tank destroyer is actually doing some significant damage. I don't want to get caught out by him now because I'm literally a 50-50 whether I'm going to die. I'm going to ping the map again and let them know that the 704 is there. I'm not just going to drive around the corner right now and throw my life away willy-nilly. I want to survive. I want to wait because this game could actually be quite close and I don't want to get caught out. Right now, there's the 704. He's spotted. Is he aiming for me? He's actually not, so I should be able to get a side shot into him here, just like that. Beautiful. See? Useful tier 8, while all of those people rushed to their demise. I was able to get that cheeky shot into the 704. Unfortunately, they have actually held back our advance. Oh, artillery, I hate you too. I should have thought about that. That was actually my bad. I should have thought about the self-propelled guns there. I can't for Well, I'm kind of screwed now when you think about it because the 704 just killed my T-124. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to progress at him. Um, he's probably going to be sitting in those bushes waiting. Can I hit this 277? Oh, I can. Nearly. Right on the side of the turret. Lower plate, maybe. It's tracks. There we go. We got a shot in. Locked him down. Let's get into cover. Hopefully the... There you go. The T-28 just squashed him. I think the T-28 ended up on top of him there. Okay, so the Borask is trying to get them from the side. I can't really afford to get caught up by the 704. I'm going to tell my team once again that there's a player there. I'm hoping that my artillery can handle the Borask. And I'm just trying to be a thorn, you know, trying to be a support tank. This is what you have to do in your tier 8 vehicles. You have to be the support tank. I'm warning my Karanvang again that there's a 704 above. They don't all seem to be respecting it. The Borask went around the corner. I track him. He's not expecting me to still be there. We actually lock him down. The 704 is actually relocated, which means that maybe I can get this Borask. Yeah, I should actually attack this Borask. I don't think he's going to be able to make it back up the slope. And the 704 has now showed that he's in the corner. The Borask dies, the T28. Um, I need to fall back, actually. I need to fall back. I'm going to tell my team to fall back. Uh, we need to defend the base. Defend the base. And the SPG. And the SPG. Okay, cool. That's what we need to do. Oh, my lord. This game is actually becoming very, very close. Um, so there's an M60. Uh, what is the M60 HP, anyone? Anyone? We need to know what the M60 HP is. Oh, my lord. Well, I'm really happy that you're getting to see me try and deal with some adversity inside this game of World of Tanks. Ah, oh, okay, so the T-44 is 500 hit points. Come on, artillery, put in one more shell so I can finish him off myself. I'm going to not turn right there because the artillery will be able to gain a shell on me, but actually thinking about the 704 getting in a position to shoot me in the butt, maybe turning there would have been the correct decision. Um, no, hopefully I'm still okay. I should really have my turret turned towards the 704 in case I get blasted in the backside here. All right, I can actually take two shells. I'm thinking this guy doesn't expect me to be back. And so right now, hello, come on Artie, yes, double team, okay, this is looking interesting now, uh, what is M60 HP, uh, HP, anyone, and I've said that twice now, I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's really important, um, T28, uh, oh, I got spotted, M60's like right here, he's probably about there, I'd say, uh, he's about there. M60's about there. Uh, M60 spotted me from there. Uh, okay, so M60 spotted me from there. That's not good. Oh, God, this is where I wish I had my binoculars on this vehicle, huh? Um, the 704 might try and push us from behind, or they could even have some TD mode artillery making their way in. Um, wow, is this 212 really going to go and have a little look to see where the M60 is? Right now, what will happen is the M60 will hold his position and the Object 704 is likely to be able to advance to get up behind me. So I'm going to ask my team to be... Can you cover my, cover that? Oh no, the artillery gets the artillery. That's unfortunate. I'm going to go have another peek, see if I can see anything. I'll probably just get spotted by the M60 when I do that. Whoa, does he spot me again? No, he doesn't actually. Okay, okay, this is interesting now. So I don't want to get caught by the 704, and the 704 is a healthy lad. Oh, there he is, there he is. Okay, I'm going to say I'm on my way. On my way. Hold on, friend. Hold on, friend. Hold on, friend. Oh, no. I'm screwed, YouTube. Unless I hit him in the engine. How am I going to handle this? 
All right, well, go down swinging, right? Oh, I can't, I can't, you can't expect me to have to handle all these vehicles and the artillery's there. And for some reason, my keyboard isn't working. Okay, I'll click my keys then. What? Why did my keyboard stop working? Must be some kind of a bug in World of Tanks. So weird. Oh, and the shell misses. Okay, well, we now know the artillery's out there and we know that the other artillery's there. Okay, good job. Oh, it's one versus five. <laughs> This isn't going to happen. M60 is just advancing towards us, thinking we're a tasty snack, and my shell dips towards the right, and we're suddenly finding out that the 27... Sorry, that the uh, IS-3 doesn't have the best. Okay, I'm going to try and wedge my vehicle up to try and allow me to get one more shot, but both of the artillery slapped me. Okay, GG, well played. Well played to the enemy team. Well played to their top-tier medium tank. Managed to pick up four kills there and shut this one down. Um, yeah, look, the IS-3... In this kind of a map and matchup, I'm not sure really too much more could be expected from me. After I lost those hit points to the 704, after the constant artillery bombards, we gave it a good go. If only the M60 had been on less hit points, then maybe we could have had a more positive impact. Nevertheless, I'm on top of damage. I'm on top of experience. Not much more can be asked for a bottom tier tank. GG, well played to the enemy team for taking this one down. Well done to the 704 for locking down that position. And I'd like to give a massive shout out as well to Arcus Arote, who actually played really well in their T28. Yeah, you can see, clearly a very good player. Look at that, nearly the bottom tier tanks managing to carry this one. Where were my top tier tanks at? What were they doing, huh? Oh well. That was the IS-3. Solid performance for this tank. Do we actually manage to lose credits though, considering we're playing? Oh, actually, I'm running a premium account right now, to be fair, because you can get Seven days of premium, at least on the European server, for using the code 2020 go home. Yeah, I, I would kind of like to send 2020 to the Gulag as well. All right, so now that we've played our heavy tank, bottom tier, now I want to play something a little bit different. I want to play the UDES 14 Alt 5A. So this vehicle, your tier 8 Swedish tech tree medium tank, is definitely one of the best tier 8 tech tree tanks, in my opinion. It has great to gun depression. It's got 12 degrees of gun depression if you're using the hydropneumatic suspension, 360 alpha, as well as decent penetration as well. And oh, on El Halouf, I'm liking the look of this game. And I can tell you exactly why I'm liking the look of this game. So on this map, it's all about dominating the northern part with using your gun depression. Now, there's two ways to play a medium tank, in my opinion, on this map. One is to try and fight it out for the north, or two is to try and make your way through towards the south, and then try and break through towards the enemy base, shut down their self-propelled guns, maybe dig out their tank destroyers, and try to then eventually come up and flank. I don't think that's going to work for this vehicle, because this vehicle's very much a get on a ridgeline and hold the ridgeline kind of tank. It's not the kind of vehicle where you want to take reckless maneuvers to be able to advance into positions you want to almost work between the ridge lines and frankly the ridge line that you choose to work between is very important because it better be influential in the battle because it's very hard to be able to progress through the ridge line and to dig out your opponents on the other side but incredibly good at counter punching and holding the position so that's what we're going to do so the borask says yeah all to same side you know what, I've been there, I've done that. I think in a replay that I featured on the channel a couple of, like a, a week ago or a couple of weeks ago in the ELC even 90, um, you would have seen me at the start of the game say, GG mediums, you didn't take the hill. I mean, it was frustrating for me because I wanted to be able to take the hill. However, you know, just because you feel that way doesn't mean that you can't also possibly uh, create a counter plan or to try and work in a different way. And that, in this game, is not going to be doing something different. I'm thinking the Borask might. Maybe the Borask has to hold. There's a really good ridge line that the bush line that the Borask can go up on the other flank to be able to hold, possibly. What I want to do here is just get myself into an early position to be able to see if we can get an early shot into the T-44. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. The Progetto seems to be one to aiming for heavy tanks that be able to come through. And right now, you're seeing how ugly it is to not have a repair crew on a tier 8 medium tank in World of Tanks. Do you see how long it takes this vehicle to be able to repair? It's a long time. All right, so I'm trying to side scrape in a vehicle that frankly doesn't side scrape very well. This is not an ideal situation for the vehicle. So much so that I'm going to have a quick look around. I feel like we're strong and I'm going to go into the dip. 
Ah, this T44 is getting me good. Well played, Mr. T44. All right, well, you got me good, T44. You don't have the depression to use that position to aim down on me. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to use that to my advantage. The T44 seems to be aggressive, wants to try and make a play. We'll put one into his turret. That is going to frustrate him. I know it. I've also got to watch out, though, because the T44 is in a platoon with the Patriot. Uh, actually, with this player who's right in front of me. So they could work together. They could try and harass me. So I've got to watch out for that. I don't want to get into a situation where those two are going to all in me. And if they do, I need to make sure that I get back as quickly as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this position. I'm hoping that my artillery can try and make some swings. Because I know that my artillery will be able to actually get some shots here. And there's the Patriot so close to being able to get him. But my vehicle's gun depression just not quite good enough. Even with these wonderful 12 degrees of gun depression this vehicle has. It's amazing how much... how. That ridge line is kind of slightly slanted downwards there, and how much of an advantage it is for the enemy team to take that. But frankly, if these guys knew where they were shooting, they could be able to hit him. And there you go, they're actually managing to. So this play right now is kind of allowing me to bait those guys into doing stupid things. And so if I can do that, then that's great. I've got to watch out that there's a super pershing up there. I want to try and see if I can maybe get a shot on the Panther 88. That thing has an awful turret. And this vehicle has very nice alpha damage. And that's really what the UDES is all about. It's kind of this counter-punching medium tank. Decent shell velocity, decent alpha damage. can really surprise its opponents. And right now it's all about being patient. It's about waiting. I would love to track this guy and just fire HE at him, but I don't want to get caught out at the same time. I don't have to worry about people shooting me in the backside right now. I really wish that this wasn't a Patriot that I was dealing with. I really wish that I was fighting against something which had better alpha damage. Because if it had better alpha damage, then that means that I could sneak the extra shell in in between its reload or it'd have more time to play. Talk about having more time to play. Goodbye, Mr. Panther 88. Okay, cool. So my team are doing a great job, but they're going to get pummeled by artillery in a second. So this vehicle's turret is bad, unlike the Patriot, so I can't go up to really harass. What I might be able to do is actually go over here and then possibly... Nah, I'm not sure. If I go over there, I'm going to get shot in the side, most likely. I think that is fanciful to be able to... Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, he's down anyway. I don't need to, don't need to worry. Okay, so this game's starting to go very well. We've got heavy tanks who are advancing through the position. If they manage to do that, then we should be good. I want to get a shot into this guy's lower plate. I mean, if I loaded the gold, I could shoot the side of his turret, but that sort of defeats the point of being on my free-to-play account today. Oh, there's my gun depression. There we go. You don't have to put many shots in in this vehicle to have a good game, right? That's what I love about this tank. Okay, the IS-3A is advancing through. They've got a revelry set. I don't want to lose these hit points. If I take one more hit, I won't be able to take... A couple of hits from the Revelerise. And that's important. Okay, he's gone. That's beautiful. Now I can actually fight because I'm not dealing with a heavy tank that has a very good turret. Got to be careful for the TD. Got to be careful for the RT. Got to be careful for where the Revelerise and where the, all the friends went. Let's advance through this position. See if I can put some pressure on these heavy tanks. I don't think the T-34 is going to be aiming at us. Of course, he has the biggest turret imaginable. Thank you very much for your big fat turret driving out into the open, Mr. Brigetto. But that is life. Okay, so right now it's time to kind of get stuck in. Progetto decided to YOLO in front of me and be able to take that damage, but can you blame him, really? He's an autoloader, and he wants to get the damage in the world of tanks, right? Okay, so now I can't depress the gun. That's okay. We shut down the T-44. You can see that the gun depression on this tank is quite clunky with the hydropneumatic suspension. I'm happy that that T-44 didn't actually manage to penetrate me there, though. That's quite significant. And we're even going to get a kill on the Lerva as well. Oh, my lord. We're up to three. I'm going to hope this Ferdinand fires. Okay, but... Oh, no repair crew. Oh, I feel like I'm waiting for the sun to set when I don't have a repair crew on this tank. Just free-to-play problems. But honestly, when you're a free-to-play player with a vehicle like this, I do think that... I do think that... Concealment is just amazing on this vehicle. Like, being able to advance into position and be able to outspot people at decent distances goes a very long way with your Swedish tanks. Can we get a kill on this Revelerise as well at the end of the game? No! I thought I was over-aiming and I wasn't over-aiming! Oh, at least we get the tracking shot. Maybe we could get this guy at the end. Oh! I should have aimed higher and not aimed at the tracks! No, actually, no, I should have just aimed in between the tracks. I was aiming correctly, I just got unlucky. 
Two hit points. Mine, maybe? Yes! Okay, good. Four kills. Hooray. Good stuff. Maybe, maybe five? Well, why is nobody killing him? Seriously? I'll take five kills. Very nice. 2,000 damage, five kills. Took me a long time to be able to deal it. But the Patriot was annoyingly resilient. That's what happened there. The Patriot was annoyingly resilient. And so there you go. Udares 14.5. I love this vehicle for working a ridgeline. The alpha damage feels phenomenal and you don't need to put too many rounds in. The penetration, all in all, is good for a T-Rex medium tank. Not incredible, but one thing is amazing is the shell velocity. If you get to play this thing as a long-range sniper, yeah, you're going to have a good day. All right, first class medal, 1,112 base experience points. If we hadn't had friendly neighborhood Progetto drive out in front of us, you little bag. <laughs> That's the player's name. Um, if we if we hadn't had friendly neighborhood Progetto drive out in front of us at auto load, um, yeah, we would have had a, a top gun. Out, we would have had a top gun out of this. So I was very happy with that round, all in all, and we make a decent profit with or without a premium account. Which is why one of the reasons why I enjoy the Udez uh, 14.5. In my opinion, it's one of the better free-to-play tier 8 medium tanks out there. Especially for an advanced player. And so if you love gun depression, you love shell velocity, you love alpha damage. Yeah, have a look at this one. It's certainly underestimated. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Hopefully I was able to make up for a little bit of the gold Newbery yesterday. Playing in OP premium tanks with preferential matchmaking by playing some of one of the classics in the form of the IS-3 in a terrible situation for the tank and also a favorable game for the Udes. We were able to almost even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the pesky premium Progetto. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what are your favorite tier 8 tech tree tanks and why. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.